Ibrahim Traoré is undoubtedly one of the most at-risk leaders in the world, as almost every Western country wants him dead. Since taking over in September 2022, Burkina Faso's captain Ibrahim Traoré has been highly active. He has reclaimed territory, initiated anti-corruption measures, and pledged swift actions against terrorists. Additionally, he has sought alliances with Russia, severed ties with France, and managed the difficult transition to civilian rule. Despite these efforts, there remains a struggle to ensure Traore is not perceived as the sole leader of Burkina Faso. In today's video, we will update you on the latest attack on Traore's life. We will also delve into his past encounters and the reasons behind these repeated attacks. Lastly, we will discuss the recent coup attempt in Dr. Congo. Before we proceed, please like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay informed about developments in Africa. Following reports of gunshots near the presidency, hundreds of protesters gathered in the capital on Friday to support Burkina Faso's military government. Protesters assembled at a central roundabout in Ouagadougou, vowing to defend President Traoré's administration. They reported hearing shots fired near the presidential residence, but were unsure of the details. They were determined to prevent any harm from occurring. Security forces closed off access to the area around the palace. Burkina Faso, a landlocked West African nation, has been under military rule since President Roque Mark Christian Cabaret was overthrown by mutinous soldiers in January 2022. On September 30, 2022, Captain Ibrahim Traoré assumed leadership, establishing a 21-month parliamentary assembly and a transitional government scheduled to end on July 1, 2024. Nationwide surveys on May 25th and 26th will determine the next steps in the transition to civilian rule. Since 2015, Burkina Faso's forces have struggled to combat jihadist insurgencies that have resulted in thousands of deaths and displaced around 2 million people. The military leaders used this violence to justify their coups. Notably, this isn't the first attempt on Traoré's regime. In January 2023, a plot to assassinate him was foiled. It was revealed that Lt. Col. Paul Henry Sandaogo de Miba, born in January 1981, was behind this thwarted attempt. Damiba had served as interim president of Burkina Faso from January 31, 2022 to September 30, 2022, until he was ousted in a coup led by Traoré. The conspirators' plan involved detonating an explosion inside the presidential residence, but fortunately, it was stopped in time. This incident highlighted the ongoing instability and the challenges faced by Traoré's administration. Despite the security measures, the country remains volatile with frequent attacks from jihadist groups and internal power struggles. The military government's actions have sparked protests, with hundreds of supporters rallying in the capital to defend Traoré's administration following reports of gunshots near the presidency. The protesters, unsure of the details, gathered to prevent any harm to the government. The Burkina Faso news agency, AIB, reported that an individual had attempted to attack a guard at the palace, but no injuries or damage occurred. Since assuming leadership in September 2022, Captain Ibrahim Traore of Burkina Faso has faced significant political instability and several assassination attempts, highlighting the precarious position of his government. The most recent attempt on his life, coupled with the arrest of four military commanders accused of plotting a coup in September, underscores the ongoing power struggles within the nation. These events have led many to question the motives of those plotting against Traore. Are they dissatisfied with his leadership? Or do they have a broader vision for the country? Or are they simply seeking revenge? The conspirators likely have considerable support. However, Traoré's position is bolstered by growing alliances and a strong base of popular support. For instance, in September 2023, Burkina Faso, along with Mali and Niger, signed a mutual defense pact to protect each other against armed rebellion and external aggression. This alliance complicates any coup attempts as any move against Traoré would also mean confronting the presidents of Mali and Niger and potentially dealing with international allies like Russia, represented by Vladimir Putin. The West might also have interests in the region, given Burkina Faso's rich natural resources, including gold, zinc, copper, manganese, phosphate, limestone, and untapped reserves of diamonds, bauxite, nickel, and vanadium. Traoré has been actively transforming Burkina Faso, launching numerous developmental projects aimed at improving the lives of his people. These include the modernization of roads, the construction of Ouagadougou Airport, and the initiation of multiple entrepreneurship programs. 
He has also continued with projects that were started before his rise to power, demonstrating a commitment to continuity and progress. This dedication has garnered him significant support from the populace, who trust him to deliver on his promises of national transformation. However, Traore's leadership has not been without controversy. While he initially promised fair elections upon taking power, he later stated that elections were not a priority at the moment. This shift has fueled speculation and concern among his opponents. Are they fighting for democratic elections or do they have other agendas? The answer to this question remains unclear, but what is evident is the complexity of Burkina Faso's political landscape. The recent attempt on Traoré's life serves as a stark reminder of the enormous challenges he faces from both internal and external adversaries. It also highlights the persistent threat of violence and instability in the region. Since 2015, Burkina Faso has been battling jihadist insurgencies that have resulted in thousands of deaths and displaced around 2 million people. The military leaders who orchestrated the coups used this violence to justify their actions, arguing that a strong military presence was necessary to combat these threats. As Burkina Faso navigates this turbulent period, the leadership's ability to transition to civilian rule and address the ongoing security threats will be crucial for the nation's stability and future. The support of the people and international alliances will play a significant role in determining the success of Traoré's administration. Furthermore, the government must ensure that its actions are transparent and in line with democratic principles to maintain the trust and support of its citizens. Captain Ibrahim Traoré's leadership in Burkina Faso is marked by significant challenges and achievements. The recent political instability and assassination attempts highlight the precarious nature of his position. However, his commitment to national transformation and the support of the populace provide a strong foundation for his administration. The future of Burkina Faso depends on the government's ability to navigate these challenges, maintain stability, and uphold democratic principles in the face of ongoing threats. This is the decade of coups in Africa. Of the 492 attempted or successful coups worldwide since 1950, Africa has experienced 220, the highest number of any region, with 109 being successful. In the past three years, there has been a noticeable surge in coups across Africa, with military leaders seizing power in Gabon, Niger, Burkina Faso, Sudan, Guinea, Chad, and Mali. Out of 54 countries on the African continent, 45 have had at least one coup attempt since 1950. In January 2023, the Chadian government announced the arrest of 10 officers and a human rights activist, Baradin Bari Terrio, who was identified as the mastermind behind an attempt to destabilize the constitutional order and institutions of the republic. The 11 men were sentenced to 20 years in prison, convicted of undermining the constitutional order, illegal possession of weapons, and criminal association. The recurrent coup attempts in Africa can be attributed to the continent's persistent division and conflict. Historically plagued by discord, Africa must strive for unity and cooperation to overcome these obstacles and create a more peaceful and cohesive continent. Cultural exchange programs and dialogue are essential ways to achieve this. Many African nations have suffered from autocratic governance and corruption, which have become ingrained in their political landscapes. By demanding transparency, getting involved in politics, and holding leaders accountable, Africans can promote democracy and good governance. What Ibrahim Traoré is doing in Burkina Faso is something other leaders should take note of. It's important to recognize that African perspectives on coups are dynamic and expectations for governance are changing. With easier access to information and a greater understanding of democratic principles, there are increasing demands for inclusive and peaceful political processes, as well as accountability and openness. Some Africans believe that these takeovers will bring about the desired change. Amid these developments, the Army of the Democratic Republic of Congo reported on May 19 that it repelled a coup attempt in Kinshasa, the country's capital, involving both U.S. and Congolese fighters. At least three people were killed following a gunfight between armed men in military uniforms and the bodyguards of a prominent politician. The House of Parliamentarian Vital Kamerhi, who was expected to become Speaker, was attacked around 4 a.m., with gunfire heard in Kinshasa. According to spokesman Sylvain Aitken, the assailants were decisively neutralized and about 50 people, including three Americans, were detained and questioned by the specialized services of the armed forces. 
Captain Christian Manga Marai, believed to have led Sunday's attack, was a wealthy businessman, politician, and former military captain in the Congolese army. He resided in the U.S., where his family secured political asylum when he was a child. In a post on X, the head of the UN stabilization mission in the Democratic Republic of the Congo vehemently denounced the incidents and pledged support to the Congolese authorities. However, President Chisakiti has not made any public comment on the coup situation. African Union Chair Musa Faki Muhammad strongly condemned the coup attempt and praised the response of the country's defense and security forces. The Democratic Republic of Congo has been engulfed in chaos for nearly 30 years, with numerous factors and a variety of actors contributing to its instability. Besides M23, several other armed groups, Congolese nationals, and foreign forces are involved in the power struggle, primarily in the country's eastern regions. Some of Kinshasa's neighbors are also involved in this turmoil. While the recent gunshots in Ouagadougou might not have been a coup attempt, they reflect ongoing efforts to destabilize the Traoré government. Although this decade of coups has left a significant impact, it can also serve as a warning. By addressing the root causes of these issues and implementing genuine reforms, Africa can create a future where coups become a relic of the past and the continent moves towards prosperity and democracy. Africa's destiny is uncertain, shaped by the decisions its people make today. Africans must choose unity over division, action over inaction, and hope over despair. Only then can the continent build a future that promises better opportunities for all and eliminates the occurrence of coups. What do you think should be done to those involved in attacks on the presidency or coup attempts? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications so you'll be informed whenever we upload new videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.